Buenas and half a day. I'm Tanya Chompokomeniola from Joint Media Marianas Public Affairs, and you're watching Island Images. And right next to me is Doak the Carabao. And the reason he's joining us today is because we're actually going to talk about him and his importance in the Chamorro culture. And joining us once again is our good friend, Mr. Tony Ramirez, who's with the Department of Parks and Recreations here in Guam, and he's also a Guam historian. Thank you so much, Jesus Maasi, Mr. Ramirez, for joining us again. Jesus Maasi, Lokitania, the Magazine Guy Gil Greeny. I'm happy to be here. Then, Hafa Ade, Toto Guam. Can you tell me the significance of the Carabao and Chamorro culture as a, as a cultural icon for perseverance and hard work? Uh, Tania, uh, in Chamorro, we pronounce the word Carabao, Carabao. And uh, this is the beast of burden in our own history uh, introduced during the Spanish period, in the latter part of the Spanish period. And uh, the icon of the Carabao is endurance and hard work. The other thing too that people don't recall is that the Carabaos we have today here in Guam mm -hmm. are the very pure breed that were brought in from the Spanish time. They were never brought in during the naval government period. Mm -hmm. So the first ones that were brought, that is, they are the original ancestors. Mm -hmm. He's a descendant of the original ancestors of the first Carabaos that were brought into Guam. By the Spanish. By the Spanish. From the Philippines. From the Philippines, uh, yeah. And you know, just a... Um, Interesting note, yeah. the Carabao is actually the national animal of the Philippines. Oh, is it? That's national yeah. animal? I didn't know that. The national animal yeah. of the Philippines. But, uh, you know, just yesterday I, I was over at Dell Alvarez's uh, office because they're celebrating welcome That's to Sumai. That's the mayor of the village of Center. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we were having the meeting on the uh, conference table, there were three Carabaos this size mm -hmm. that he received from the Philippines or gone to the Philippines. But again, you know, he bought it or he brought it here because of the cultural connections we have to the uh, Carabao. Yeah. Why does it represent endurance? Uh, you know, one of our uh, local banks has the icon of the mm -hmm. Carabao, mm -hmm. and they chose that because that family, Sablon, has always had the identity of the Carabao. They are a very enduring family, has always had that image of the endurance, of uh, always working hard, and that is the icon of the of the Carabao, but they are very useful animals, and not just also for the uh, for the agricultural fields, but they were used for Carabao races. They were used for Carabao families. baseball. Uh, Carabao baseball. <laughs> you see that all in the in, in, in the naval government uh, pre-war uh, photograph, but it really became uh, uh, an icon of Guam. The Carabao was introduced to be a part of the agricultural. Uh, development of Guam because they were the ones that were plowing. In Chamorro we call that word aladu. They were the ones that were plowing the fields and were also used uh, in uh, the Spanish period and even in the early American period, the naval government of Guam, uh, for the uh, rice fields. The history of the Carabao yeah. is very interesting because yeah. I know I have actually seen photos yeah. where during naval times even the Navy utilized them right. when I guess it's because our infrastructure wasn't ready to bring vehicles in. Right. I've seen them actually towing like water pipes. So That's they were actually a part of Guam's yeah. development of our infrastructure. Right, they're the heavy oh. equipment operators. They're the heavy equipment, equipment operators. Yeah, right, yeah. of the time, especially in the early uh, naval government period mm -hmm. when they were, they were trying to uh, develop. But uh, really they're very beautiful animals. Very I, docile, very yeah, and Very docile, this calm. one is, yeah, yeah. See Doak, yeah. right, yeah. It's the weaving of history. And there is no question, there is no question that Carabao is one of those parts in the weaving process of who we are today as Chamorros. That's why it's such a cultural icon. And I'm very close to the Carabao. I mean, I see them, I drive around to Southern Guam, and sometimes I see them along the road. But do I see that just as a, purely as an animal along the road? No. I see that Carabao representing our history of you know who they are and the contribution they gave into our own history. That's their legacy. And right. Doak, his ancestors, like I said, were the very were the first ones to come here. They were never reintroduced after the Spanish period and today it's the same breed. Great, great. Okay, so with that, you know, I want to thank Mr. Ramirez again for joining us. And then now we're gonna hand it over to Greg 
Kuntz, who is the Deputy Public Affairs Officer for Joint Asia Marianas, and he's going to talk to Mr. John Uggen, who is actually Doc's owner. Hello, I'm here today with John Ray Uggins, and uh, we're, we're here to talk a little bit about the Carabao. And, uh, you know, the first question I would have is, uh, how, long have you, how long have you had this uh, Carabao? I had this Carabao since the year 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, captured him at Uprights on the wild. His name is Doak, and Doak uh, in Chamorro, translated in English, means he only has one eyeball working. Uh, his left eyeball is smashed during the fight out in the wild. The Carabao has been here since the 1600s. Uh, we have accepted it as uh, one of our cultural icons because uh, the Carabao means a lot to the family. Uh, even in exchange for marriage, you know, uh, owning a Carabao and trying to please the right to be parent of, uh, you know, how manly you are, that you can support her daughter, marry her daughter and support her, is, you know, say, okay, I got this Carabao. You know, I'm going to give it up in behalf of a gift for your uh, hand of your daughter. It is also uh, the livelihood of uh, farming back then. Uh, even up to the late 60s, there are still farmers that use this for a one plow uh, farming. After the John Deere and the Ford tractor started coming in, they were not utilized anymore for farming. So they were just raised for, uh, for meat. The Carabao, um, they call water buffalo in English because they only sweat on the nose. So in order for them to cool off, they go in the water and soak off. Because they overheat two hours in the hot sun and they'll die of heat stroke. A cabo is called a beast of burden because it carries its own weight. And it also uh, pulls twice its weight. Right now you can say he's going on two-wheel drive. But in order for him to pull twice his weight, it bends on his knee and pulls it. As a cultural icon, I can't think of a better cultural icon. Something that is very, very powerful, very awesome in structure, but yet very friendly and, and, and very helpful. It's kind of ironic, but there's three of us that promote Carabao with our visiting guests, our tourists. And the uh, latest one that just left us is uh, John T. Tao Tao, uh, who, who does the Yamada with the Carabao. And prior to him was John Santos, the one with the dog and Petey. And my name is John too. <laughs> so, you know, I'm the, I'm the remaining out of the three and I thank the Lord that I'm, I'm here to continue on, uh, you know, promoting our culture and affording the guests the opportunity for uh, being able to touch, see, and ride on our caravan. Uh, MWR, both in Anderson and Navy, uh, acquired my riding service, so, you know, for uh, our military personnel to get first-hand experience. Uh, I do cargo rides down at Naval Station for Christmas and they're up in Anderson for their uh, July 4th for any events. By bringing this up to the bases or into the bases uh, gives the opportunity for our visiting uh, service members here for a year or a couple years to uh, experience what a cargo looks like because you know, not every cowboy is approachable. You know, mm. uh, some of them are just being tendered on a pastor and they're not trained, but cowboy like Doak, Etsung, and uh, Emma that I had, they're uh, pretty much trained and pretty much ex uh, exposed to people. It's an awesome looking animal, uh, you know, and, and from, a, from an old uh, farmhand, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. And uh, sir, I'm very impressed with what you, what you do with it and, and, and how close you are to it. What's, what do you consider the, the best part of uh, raising Carabao or being able to be with Carabao uh, is? It's making a lot of friends to it. You know, I can stand out there on the road and people don't really care about me. But the minute I have a Carabao next to me, you know, I see visitors, strangers, and everyone just want to come up, get their picture taken, you know, and uh, just uh, have that experience. And uh, just to show you, we're going to have some of our visiting guests here right on this carbo. That is, that'll be great. That, live it. Okay. This is Greg Coons with Joint Region Marianas Public Affairs. Viva Mess Chamorro!
Viva Mestre Moro! Viva! Viva Mestre Moro! Viva! 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 Viva!